Hi, it's Chester Tugwell at Blue PK and Computer Training, and in this video, we're going to look at debugging techniques in Excel VBA. So, the first type of error we're going to look at is a syntax error. This occurs as you're writing your code, the code goes red if you've got a syntax error, and you'll get a compile error warning. So, if I uncomment this line here, you'll see it goes red. And there's my little error message, expected list separator or uh, close parenthesis. Well, actually, the problem is, is that I didn't put my speech marks after A1. Same error, though, if you don't put that close bracket in. Uh, this one, in this case, is actually more helpful, more accurate. So I can put that in. So it's the syntactical error that you've achieved when it goes... Uh, red. Now there is a way of actually turning off those little messages if you find them annoying. If I go to tools and then to options, you've got auto syntax check. If I untick that to get rid of it. So now it still goes red, but I don't get that dreadful message coming up, which is sometimes completely unhelpful anyway. The next type of error we're going to look at is a compile error. So if I uncomment that line, it doesn't go red at all. And there's one way I can actually compile the code without actually running it, just to check for compile errors. If I go to the debug menu and then go to compile VBA project, it highlights in blue the offending error. It says sub or function not defined. Well, actually, the problem there is that I've misspelled the word worksheets. So now if I press play, um, it actually runs that piece of code quite nicely for me. And it says hello in sheet, uh, sheet one. And now I want to talk about option explicit, which you see I've set it up here. What this does is force you to declare your variables with the dim keyword before you can use them. So this helps to point out errors, misspelling in your code. I'll give you an example. If in this sub procedure I formatted, say, the background color of the cell, but I'm going to spell the color name incorrectly, VB read, for example. Now, if I run that, it says that the variable is not defined because I've got option explicit stated at the top there. But if I take that out and run it, it actually formats it with a black color. There's a kind of default interior color there. So, you might not better spot very easily where the error is. So having option explicit up there is pretty useful. Now there is a way to force yourself to always declare your variables. If I go to tools and options there, require variable declaration. So for all future modules, you'll have that option explicit. And if I create a new module now, you can see it's automatically stated at the top of the new module. So next we'll look at runtime errors. Um, this is going to have a problem, this sub procedure, because it's going to try and select a sheet that doesn't exist. Now there's no red text, so there's no syntax errors. If I try and compile it, I've got that problem up there. Let's change that back to VP Red. But if I try and compile this, no compile errors. But when I come to run it, then I get the error. Runtime error 9, subscript out of range. So that sheet doesn't exist. If I press debug, it highlights in yellow the offending line. So the code has been run up. This line of code has already been run but it's got stuck there. So the idea is then you'd have to put in a proper sheet name. So if I put in sheet one, sheet 
two, let's say, because I'm already selected sheet uh, two, and then I'd play it and it would continue. Okay, so it's just a matter of amending it and then replaying it. So you can either press the play button here or press F5 on your keyboard uh, to continue with the sub procedure. So the next trick is to show you how to step through your code. So by that, I mean that you're able to slow down Excel. So you're in control of how quickly it goes through the lines of code. Um, so you can put, there's various ways of doing this. You can go debug step into, and you'll notice it highlights the first line of this sub procedure in yellow, or you can just use the F8 key on your keyboard. Now, what's quite nice to do is to kind of split your screen as I've done here. So you've got your VBA code on one side and then your Excel spreadsheet on the other. And as you go through it, you can see that it starts to apply the code to your spreadsheet. Now, this actually hasn't got any problems with its code. I just wanted to show you how it actually worked. Uh, having said that, <laughs> it has got a problem. It came up with an error, so it stopped here. So I can see where the problem is, is that I've got UK spelling of color. And then I could continue with F8, columns auto fit, end with, end sub. So yeah, there was a problem there with the misspelling of color, even though I didn't spot that. So that F8 is really good allowing you you know you run a sub procedure it comes up with an error and you're not sure quite where that error fits into the overall scheme of things so f8 step through or debug step into is a good way of doing things a kind of related trick in terms of being related to stepping through your code is to set a break point now if you had a huge sub procedure pressing f8 on 200 lines of code is tedious beyond belief so um what you can do is if i put that error again for example i could set a breakpoint and it's pretty easy to do that you just click in this kind of gray margin and it puts a circle in there and what that means is that you can run your code up to the breakpoint so you can see the effect of your uh, macro exactly what it's achieved up to that point and that again will help you to identify errors in your in your code okay next we're going to look at the immediate window uh, to view that go to view uh, immediate window or control G now that's all well off the screen so I'm just gonna bring the relevant code up the top there and then drag this up so you can see uh, the immediate window so I've got a fairly pointless bit of code here, but all it's going to do is going to times each of these values by 10, and it's going to get a problem when it gets the GOAT value. It's going to throw up an error. So I would like to see what value has been assigned to the variable RG when that error is thrown up. So that would make them fairly obvious in this small list. We had a big spreadsheet. This is going to be really quite a useful technique. Now, the key to this is to put a little bit of code in here. Uh, debug dot print, and then the name of the variable that you're setting your immediate window for. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to press play and obviously it's going to get to an error. So I press debug and it's on that line of code, but you can see the values that have already been assigned to that variable as it's gone through this for each next loop. And goat is obviously where it stopped. That's the last value assigned to that variable. So I know that that is the problem with my little piece of code, it's in the spreadsheet itself, I can't multiply that text value by 10. Now, you can use this immediate window to also interrogate the variable. So if I come down here and I just say, for example, question mark, start it with a question mark, rg.address, 
and it would give you the address of the value that's been assigned to that variable. Uh, I could even, for example, assign a different value to that variable. So if I said rg equals five, and then continue, it works on the rest of the uh, the values in that in that list. It works fine. Okay, so a number of things you could do in that immediate window uh, to help you debug your code. Okay, so next we're going to look at the watch window just to explain this bit of code. It's going to run on these numbers here. It's going to base the background color of the cell on these numbers here. So it's going to have a problem when it gets to 200 because there isn't a color index number for 200 or are for the other numbers. Um, so the watch window will allow us to watch the variable in this instance, a bit just like the immediate window, uh, but it is slightly more advanced in terms of what you can achieve. So to show the watch window, you go to view and then watch window there, and you'll get a little a window down at the bottom here. So to set a watch, you just right click on instance of the variable in your code, and then you can click on add watch and then OK. Um, but you could also set a watch that looked specifically at the, the address of the variable at that point in the code. So if I right click at watch, I could say rg.address. OK, so if I now run my code, and debug, it tells me very clearly that the offending value is 200 and it's in cell A20. So I can quickly go to that cell and change that value. And then I'm able to run the rest of my code. So if I put in 20 there and then press play, it continues on down through the rest of the cells, applying the relevant background color. OK, so last trick using the locals window. I'm going to close down the watches window. View locals window. Uh, this, different again, it's going to show you a list of all your procedures variables when, when in break mode. And again, very, very helpful for spotting errors. This procedure here basically it's going to multiply one by one, one by two, one by three, et cetera, et cetera, up to 100. If I press play, you see exactly what it does. And eventually I get an error. I get an overflow error. And that is due to the, how I've declared the variables. I've declared them both as byte. Now with the variable with the Byte data type, the maximum value you can have is 255. So you look in your locals window, it lists all your variables, three times 86, that's more than 255. So from that, you can work out where your problem is and you need to change the data type that you're using for your variables. So another useful little trick, the locals window uh, for debugging your sub procedures. Okay, thanks very much for listening. It's been Chester Tuckwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training.